Welcome back to the Brandon K Show. I am your host as always, Brandon K, and this is still a real show. I'm here today with my tattoo artist and friend, Mr. Crow. What's up, everyone? Nice, nice to see y'all. Good to see you. Uh, welcome to the Brandon K Show, man. <laughs> Thanks, Brandon. What's oh, yeah. Up? Crow was on a couple weeks back talking about children of the future. Mm-hmm. That was, we did such a great job on that one. And speaking of children of the future, I want to talk about our sponsor, Gift Apply. They're very much about helping the children with their Give Kids the World wrapping paper. And Gift Apply, the Brandon K Show is brought to you by Gift Apply Charity Wrapping Paper. Flat packed for convenience, eco-friendly, and made in America. Each purchase includes 33% donations to one of eight incredible causes, including, well, these are different, but including Give Kids the World, Be the Change, Give Kids the World, uh, Alex's Lemonade Stand for Childhood Cancer, It Gets Better Project, Best Friends Animal Society, and more. This is uh, Be the Match. Yeah, they're all there on the website. Check them out. And they have uh, greeting cards too. Or some, yeah. Elevate your gift gi giving throughout the year with Gift Apply Charity Wrapping, where every wrap is a gift to charity. At charity. And utilize coupon code BK Show at checkout to save 25% off your entire order. Thank you, Gift Apply. Give the gift that keeps on giving. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I knew Crow. He was on the show. We met on Instagram. <clears throat> um, we are both doing the positive thing. We, we put out positive messages out into the world on our Instagrams. Oh, yeah, we try to... Uh, because why not? Yeah, why not? Let's pump these people up. Everybody's kind of in a gloomy mood. Let's brighten up their day, you know? Uh, did we, and then, yeah, could we see the Instagram? Because there was some cool stuff we wanted to talk about. Sure. We'll not only up. about his tattoos that are on there, <clears throat> but also about that cool video shoot you did. Yeah, we had a, a music video with these this uh, Indian rapper, um, Shab, Shub, S-H-U-B-H. Mm -hmm. uh, we got together for the song uh, Safety Off. And so uh, I've never really heard of this guy's music um, before. Till now, I've been I've been listening to some of the stuff. It's in Hindu Hindu rap. Is it on here? Should I look for a certain? Uh, yeah, it's that, a, it was that picture of him at the at the with his shirt off and the gun. Oh, okay, so yeah, it's down yeah, here. Yeah, let's go down to that. One. Oh, up, go up, go up. It was like a whole. How many guys were there that day? Oh man, there was a ton, a ton of guys, man. Here. A lot of East LA, LA gangs, gangsters. Yeah. Oh wow, you're all <laughs> you know? tatted up. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Yeah, you know, I just got tatted up for that day. You know, just for. Oh, really? Well, <laughs> yeah. Are, no, but seriously, those are all real, right? Yeah, those are all real, like, man. Those are all on. me. Yeah, I earned those. Uh, I still got a lot to go, but um, yeah, so far my collection. Who so, your tattoo? obviously other people did it for you, right? Yeah, yeah. I've got various artists, man. A lot of friends. Rico Sandoval out of La Mancha. Uh, A.B. Alvarez out of uh, Three Foot Radius. Big Sleeps. He's out in downtown LA. Um, Obi from uh, Escondido Body Art. And what's the one over on this side? Like that one? It looks like a tree, or what is that? Oh yeah, yeah. So that's a, a dual duality. That's by Obi in Escondido Ooh. Body Art. Yeah, it's a, a duality tattoo. It's a duality. Mesoamerican uh, influence. So Aztec and o Olmec, Mayan. And what's your origin? You're Hispanic, or yeah, uh, Mexican. You know, so Mexicans are, are mestizos originally. Okay. Well, that's how Mexico was created. Uh, but before then, you had the natives, you know, and then, of course, our ancestors, the, the Spanish, the Europeans that came over. So and, we're a mix. <laughs> and then you, when you did that shoot, that was kind of like for the community too, right? Yeah, so they, that, well, that shoot right there was for, for the rapper. They, mm -hmm. they needed some uh, uh, gang, East LA gang looking right. type type characters. Ah, so you were a gang so member. the Chicano, yeah, I was Got a it. gang member right there, you know? <laughs> So how many how many other people were gang members? Were you a gang of one or what? Oh no no, we were a gang of like a few, you know, a <laughs> gang of many. <laughs> but yeah, with all your you know uh, community work and cool stuff you're doing and posting on Instagram, yeah, I talk on this show about how I've overcome all my personal challenge. So today I wanted to give you a chance to talk about you know your story because I've heard it on other podcasts and I, it's very inspirational to me. Um, oh yeah, man. Talk um, about that other podcast too. Where, where would I watch that? Oh yeah, yeah. So that podcast, uh, incredible Javier. Um, and I don't know the exact uh, YouTube link, but uh, it's uh, incredible Javier, uh, a, a guy that I met through the pandemic when we were all on lockdown, and 
I think we were all looking at like ways to uh, kind of keep our to kind of keep us keep ourselves busy. So I was uh, on YouTube at this moment, and I came across this guy's uh, podcast, and uh, it, it talked about a lot of kids that were incarcerated before in uh, the CYA uh, institution, which is a uh, California Youth Authority. Um, a lot of yeah, yeah. There he, there he is. There he is yeah, right there. I watched. I watched the the first half hour or so. Um, yeah, uh, it was talking all about your whole life story, right? Yeah, we were talking about like uh, from the point of uh, growing up and how we grew up in these neighborhoods that were uh, very gang related, you know, and how we got involved in the gangs or if we avoided them or not, or you know. How, did you, how did you get out? We want to. I want to hear it on this show. Okay, I mean, uh, getting out. Uh, there wasn't really much of a getting out. Maybe it was a, more of a growing up, you know. Ah, okay. Yeah, more of a a, a level of maturity where uh, I wasn't um, escaping anything, you know basically just kind of outgrowing it you know um there's no uh ill will with uh, the, the the homies in the past or anything like that mm -hmm. like it's it's really just a, a process i think that that i had to like kind of endure you know and and just to appreciate my past because i don't i don't really have a i don't i i regret the things that i did and that i went through of course but i mean i, I went through it i can't i, I i've accepted it and it makes you who, it makes you who you are yeah it makes me who i am yeah exactly so that's the being that's part of me being authentic to my story right is because yeah. you know i'm sure that was a while back is there something in gangs where they all kind of outgrow it at some point or a lot of them like do say like i don't want to do this anymore or? yeah i think that there's a lot of uh, a lot of, there's a big group you know i, I want to say like uh i think it's a collective of people that just individually like okay this is this is where i'm going now with my life you know i've experienced the the good and the bad of gangs and now it's like where do i go from here you and know even someone in a gang they could still be like a positive influence on uh, on the community at times i mean I yeah I, I feel like uh the, the 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 stigma you know of, of being in a gang is that well it is bad you know the things that you're doing it are bad you know essentially but i feel like uh you could make you could turn around you could make you could turn things around and turn a bad thing into a good thing you know and having that connection through your gang, you know, that you built up in your community because you were part of a community, um, it still gives you that value of, of like that street credit, you know, where people will kind of listen to you because you've got kind of gone through oh, yeah. the, the worst end of that. Like you, yeah. you experienced the worst of it. And so for people that are starting in on that, maybe they need a little like convincing of like, hey, man, this is not where you want to go, you know. I think ultimately, like the thing people don't really think about with gangs is that so much so many people get into gangs because they're looking for role models like they don't have mm. a father at home you know what i mean they they don't have people that they can look up to or people to encourage them and a lot of times they go to the gangs because they see that despite all the other things that are going on these people are are have a sense of belonging a place yeah. where they feel like they fit you know and unfortunately it leads down bad roads but you're right it's, it's great when people can take that experience but then get out of it and move on to something more productive in their lives yeah totally yeah i think that uh that the 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 that camaraderie that you get with your friends, you know, that those bonds that you build are super important, you know. Yeah. Because uh, in life, like later on in life, you're gonna build those same bonds with other people, you know. Right. Even though they're not in a gang or anything, but it's, you know, again, it's not, it's not that the gang or the gangs are, as you know, what they do or whatever, they're, they're bad. But the people that are in these gangs also still have like a lot of a lot of value, you know, a lot of worth. Yeah. So. No. And I think also, yeah, we're all we're all like teenagers, you know, preteens, mm -hmm. thinking we know, you know, what's right. And, right. you know, we're just following this like we're just following this wave. You know what I mean? That we're following the current and it's taking us and we're doing our best. You know what I mean? For some and for some of us, you know, we get to we get taken by by the undercurrent and we don't make it. Oh, definitely. Did you get into tattooing before? Or, I mean, like, what, what? at what point did you get into tattooing? Um, You know what? It's interesting, man. So I I got incarcerated, you know, as a kid. I got tried as an adult, and I got, uh, I got at 15 years old, I got tried as an adult for uh, an assault with a deadly weapon. But I discharged a firearm, hitting my, my victim or whatever, my opponent at the time. Uh, you know, it was, it was this, you know, this big old fight that we had uh, with, with enemies or whatever, supposed enemies, and um. Uh, you know, I was I was just out doing gangster things, you know. Um, got me caught up in jail. I went in. Um, they gave me five years. Tried as an adult. So 
they sent me to uh, the CYA, the uh, California Youth Authority, to do my time there until I turned 18. But being that the, the CYA is so kind of, it's so hectic and violent, it's, and it's just, it's just unpredictable, you know? They don't really have control, even though that, that's what they're, they're for, you know, to have control. But um, so I, by the time I was there, uh, I was there about eight months, uh, right before my 17th birthday, a month before my 17th birthday, uh, they sent me to adult prison. So I got into the CDC. Um, so throughout my time, I'd always known about tattoos and I'd seen them. A lot of people there have them. When was your first tattoo? When did you my get first tattoo, first? dude, I was like 13 years old. I got <laughs> yeah. My homies so had a homemade sticking? machine. Is yeah, that, that's the, they stick you sometimes. No, like you know what? My what's a homemade machine? How a homemade it? machine, dude, is literally a motor, a needle, um, and just some batteries, dude, put together to make yourself a, a Was tattoo it gun. Fourteen. <laughs> He's a little older than me, you know. He had a little more experience than I did. You have? Can you show this? You, the, the uh, dude, it's so tiny. It it's so, it dude, it's three dots. Let me see. It's three dots. Can you see them? They're barely right there. I didn't want to cover them up. Just They're kind of covered up. up by the mic a little bit. There we go. All right. Right there. Yeah, you see them. Yeah. Very small dots. Very small yeah. dots. But yeah. The, the, yeah. Was that pain, especially painful? or? You know what, dude? My pain tolerance was, you know what? I was just exaggerating, bro. Like, I remember my buddy doing it, me being scared. Like, oh, my God, this is such a, uh, I, I was in such fear at that moment because I'm thinking, man, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm breaking the rules, you know? I'm, like, I'm getting a tattoo without my parents' permission, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so you show up with little dots on your... Oh. You know what, man? Nobody ever seen them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except for my teacher, man. My, my sixth grade teacher, Miss, Miss uh, Ireland. She was my math teacher. And she grabbed my, my wrist. She grabbed my hand. She's like, what's this? And I just looked up at her. I was like, a tattoo? And she just threw my hand down like... <sighs> Like boy, you just yeah. ruined your whole life. Yeah, literally, she gave me that look, man. I was like, I'm sorry. Like, oops. What was you know? your first like one? Your first major one? My first, uh, my first major one. I got at. I got in prison, dude. I got, I got uh, my mother's name and my grandmother's oh, names. Cool. Um, and that was like my first experience seeing uh, how a tattoo worked. It, you know, like real I, machine? like in real life, yeah. yeah. Like by a, by someone who was a professional mm -hmm. in prison. Mm -hmm. And so, so they don't have real machines in prison. No, no, they they're made. Oh wow, they're literally made. Yeah. So but you have like all the motor right and equipment, everything, motor and everything, um, the whole nine. I mean, we had it all. No kidding. Yeah, w which is funny, you know. Okay, so I'm in prison, man, and I'm, I'm I'm going to school, but I'm not going to school because prisons don't really have. Like you'll go to school maybe a week or two, and then lockdowns happen or things happen anyway. I'm doing my time, bro. I did not know that I was getting my tattoo apprenticeship when I was. Because uh, throughout my my term, there was people around me tattooing, and I had one of my my room my bunkmate, who was a tattoo artist already established. Now I'm I'm watching him kind of get his get get his uh, business on the go in the prison in the dorms, and I'm watching him, and I'm getting my start from this just by watching him, you know. And I'm drawing. I've already been drawing and doing my own thing, you know. Um, when I paroled, I kept in touch with my buddy, sent him a letter, sent him some money. He he liked, you know, we, 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 we created such a bond or whatever. When he got out, he got into tattooing. And so he opened up a shop eventually. I started working with him. But also, since I've been around so many uh, inmates that were inside tattooing, these guys got out and they became really great tattooers. Oh, wow. So then it just made like this community of like people that I, I had a lot in common with that I had encountered yeah. while I was in you prison. You had a built-in yeah. network. Yeah. yeah, literally, dude. And it was, it was such a blessing. Even though it was such a curse at the same time, you know. <laughs> so, wow. you know, shout out to my homies, man. They, they, you know, it's good to have to meet them again. You know, cross their paths again, and yeah. now we're tattoo artists. So, we well, showed right. your tattoos last time. I sh I showed my tattoo off here. Oh yeah, time. man, that color piece right there. Yeah, that. such a beauty, man. I mean, the, the detail work is incredible. The detail work is incredible if you if you see it up close. But yeah, yeah. even. That one you did with the life and death on the leg, on the on the thigh. Yeah. Oh yeah, my yeah. friend Natalia's thigh. Um, all Natalie. those, all those ones up on your Instagram. I mean, obviously, I'll recommend anybody to go check out. Yeah, check me out. Check man. out your stuff, but um, yeah. Like, there. What's your advice to um? I like this hand in the overcoming. Oh yeah, the like clown. overcoming. You know all this, all these challenges. You know, man, overcoming. You know, overcoming. Um. You probably have to be very grateful, man, at the start of your day. Really uh, adapt that type of uh, attitude in the morning because uh, 
there's a there's a very challenging day up ahead for you, you know? Like you you got to to overcome doesn't mean just to like get over hop over a fence or anything. It, it, to overcome really means um you uh getting over a breakup, depression, uh sadness, uh you know, like all these bad feelings, man, that you got to really push through to 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 get on the other side, you know? This feels so inspirational now with like the art and then you talking and it's like a cool video. Or <laughs> it's got a good vibe, huh? But then, yeah, I see you on on Instagram putting your message out there. So like what what's a message you would give to my audience? Like just address them like your Instagram audience. Tell them, tell them what's up. Look right uh, at that camera over there. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, you know what, man? Cheer up, you know? Cheer up. Be cheery. You know, don't sell yourself short, you know? Shine, you know? You got that glow inside you. You know, remove all that dust, that dirt that's on the surface, you know. But but kindly. Be kind to yourself, you know, compassionate and show compassion towards others. Like you literally need to treat yourself like you would treat uh anyone else, you know, with love, you know. Like give yourself all the love that you can and uh, encourage yourself and then also give that away to other people. You know, just live it. Live that life and don't give up. That's so important. So many people don't understand how to apply love to themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's just that's like a that's like a tough one. Yeah, we get amnesia, huh? Yeah. Something happens and it just we forget how to love ourselves. Yeah. So you gotta do a lot of soul searching for sure. Yeah. Do you do affirmations? Um, you know what? The affirmations I'm not that great at, but I'm I'm practicing, dude. I'm practicing because yeah, it's hard to give yourself love. It's weird, man. What does it look like when you're when you're working out? Like, do you how do you motivate yourself to work out and get out, out there and do your thing? Music, dude. I put on my headphones. I put on um, whatever comes on. You know, I put my 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 uh, playlist on shuffle. I hip-hop? have rancheras, hip hop. I have a uh, I have a uh, classic. I have soul. I have blues, rock, uh, metal. I have ballads. I have all these love songs, R and B. Like I just go off, dude. Even uh, EDM music, you know, like electronic music or whatever. Um, I just let it. I just let it go off, dude, and I let myself flow and just kind of. Oh, look at that! <laughs> yeah, hey, that's me right there, man. Dude, I was so proud of my gains right there, man. I'm like, damn. <laughs> oh, this is recently. Yeah. Recently, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been eating a lot of like, been eating right, man. I've been drinking water, eating yeah. right. Yeah, I feel like yeah, there's you know influencers, and I'm one of them. Is you know we there you just go. we get out there and we just show ourselves working out, and that can inspire somebody to just get out there and work out that day. I don't know. Yeah. Hey man, it, it can help someone just go out there and get it. You know. Yeah, people. Yeah. I mean, I, it could feel silly, like if you had never put out a video or something before. But like, I think it's I think it's a good thing to just put, it's authentically putting yourself out there, showing what you're doing for the day. Maybe inspire somebody. It's nothing. There's no reason for somebody to judge. Like, people can judge, but, like, they don't have to. Yeah, people love to judge. You know, we, we're in this, like, culture of just criticizing. You know, we throw critic, we crit, we criticize everybody and everything, dude, so willingly. Do you get but some trolls there on your channel? I do, man. Yeah, why? You know, I've been working really hard not to, like, cuss at people or, yeah. like, not, like, engage, you know? I got some bad ones. Like, people insulted my legs. They said my legs are skinny. They they, they said weird stuff about, like. They say some weird stuff, huh? Yeah, yeah. Like, like, what are you wearing? Well, you know what they call me? They call me, like, a. Um, Matthew Lillard, if he was a murderer. Oh, is that oh, wow? Really? Yeah, like they were just like people like to just come up with crazy stuff to say. Whenever they're just being creative, huh? They're just uh, being creative, like go viral. Like, <laughs> it's yeah. But it's just so insulting. It's like, oh, I mean, like, yeah, just going out of their way to be insulted. What did you hear? Any funny ones? Or uh, no, my my man, my haters aren't funny, man. <laughs> yeah, they're not clever with their stuff. I, well, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, maybe I have I have heard something that's that's probably hurt my ego or something, and I, I just forgot about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I embraced I, it, bro. I heard a saying once. It said, "Nobody who's doing better than you is ever going to say anything bad about you." Yep, that's exactly. Think about that. Like that. So everybody exactly. who's saying things bad about you is somebody who's not doing as good. Exactly, they're like crabs in a bucket, man. Yep, crabs I, in a bucket. I have that visual in my head. Yeah, it's like pulling us down. Yeah, cr- yeah. crabs in the bucket. They're all in the bucket, and then they pull each other back in. They don't want anybody to get out of the bucket. Yeah. That's the crab in the bucket thing. Yep. Yeah, literally, man. Hey, remember? Uh, I remember a video you posted up of, uh, and you were being goofy, I think, but it was a high energy video, and mm-hmm. you were just talking about working out, and uh, and I remember people were hating on that video, and I'm yeah. like, bro, don't listen <laughs> to these guys, man. Like, yeah, freak dummies, you know, or whatever, you know, like it, it can it can wear on you. It's like, okay, why am I gonna put this out there if if, if like. People are going to hate it. But, I mean, you just have to 
I have the desire to inspire. That's one of my hashtags, one of my life mottos. I'm here to inspire you. Mm -hmm. I'm on my Instagram to inspire somebody. I'm not, even if you're going to criticize, I'm just there to inspire. I'm not there to like make myself look better or like. Yeah, you're not trying to become the king of Instagram. Yeah, right. I'm doing, I'm doing it for you. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, that ego, you know, you let that ego run you and it's just going to run it. I mean, but ego is good, too. At the same time, you got to have some kind of character, self confidence, self love. Yeah. It's like, hey, I, I'm happy. I'm proud of myself that, yeah. I, that I, I can lift 100 pounds now or you got some gains or, you know. Oh, yeah. It's like we should feel proud of ourselves and not let somebody say, like, oh, you're being egotistical just because you're, you're so, happy. Yeah. Bro, some of my, yeah. Some of the, 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 the people that best inspired me, man, are some of the nerdiest, skinniest. Like most authentic dudes that like I'm like man you're just being yourself dude and like that that alone gives me strength dude that I want to do the same thing you know yeah just be myself who cares dude what people say you, like, you find some great you know people to look up to like Arnold Schwarzenegger or something and you know you don't see them as like the most egotistical person it's like they were just living their dream living their dream right yeah they're being authentic authentic to themselves I was watching the movie Role Models mm -hmm. um, remember that movie where uh, that character Fogo. I forget his name, but Fogo, um, but, yeah. McLovin. Yeah, that's yeah, McLovin's uh, that's, doing uh, the super bad. Super bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that kid, you know, he's uh he's in that movie Role Models, and he's uh mm -hmm. he's uh he's in this uh, event where they're they they dress up as a uh, as knights. Yep, I remember the D and D cosplay thing. The cosplay yeah. thing, bro. Yeah. Uh, to me, that's so authentic, bro. Like it's like, man, I want to do that. Like I don't want to be scared that, that I'm being judged, you know. <laughs> Because I want to do something fun, dude. Like that's to me, it's bravery. You know this, what I mean? This one, right? I, yeah, that I movie. I still haven't bro. seen this yet. Yeah, uh, it's such yeah. a funny movie, man. Yeah, and look at him; he's dressed up like a. You know what I mean? If I dressed up like that, dude, I know I'm getting clowned. You know? <laughs> yeah. well, that's but I'd, I'd probably do it anyway. You know, like you know, you gotta be brave, man. You gotta not care what people think. I know we come from different backgrounds, but like I was a nerd in high school, so like I know that being a nerd was more authentic. Bro, I wanted to be a yeah, nerd, man. Be, you know. Yeah, I was in choir. You want to do when you're a nerd. Yeah, I was in yeah. choir, dude. I wanted to be a tagger, but then I got caught up in the whole uh, gang thing or whatever. But mm. you know, whatever. Yeah, it's still fun. I was still a nerd, and mm. I was still, you know, we were still into like what we were into. So. So yeah, like a nerd doesn't care what people think. Yeah. And you know, I think that's a good way to live. Yeah, dude. Like, I mean, I, I remember my homies always being like, "Crow, you you read a lot of books, huh?" And it's like, mm -hmm. like, dude, yeah, I'm, I'm a nerd, bro. Like, they're also the smart ones. Yeah, dude. I just. Yeah, exactly, dude. Like, be sitting there. That's why they called me Crow, man. They're like, Crow, you're smart. <laughs> Your nickname's yeah, Crow, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Do you have a Crow tattoo on you? You know what I do, man? Um, my buddy Rick Moreno, he's out in... Uh, he's oh, wow. Out. Look yeah, at that. He, he, he drew this up, and uh, it's a Crow with the machine gun AK, and he's got a key, a ski mask. We call him the uh, the ghetto bird. Mm. So I was like, yeah, dude, I want it. Like, it's pretty cool, man. So just kind of got that Crow on me. You know, yeah. make them fun, you know? Yeah, yeah. Make I was them thinking fun. you should, like, sign your tattoos with a crow. Yeah. No, I'm working on <laughs> the it, dude. crow was here. I've been working on it. I, I've got a lot of projects coming up, man, where I want to um, push myself a little further, be more creative, be more authentic, you know, and push my brand more. You know, uh, right now, I mean, that's that's really, like, the goal that I'm focusing on. I've been getting into a lot of acting, so background work. I'm going to try to get into that. Yeah, dude, it's fun, man. Like any meeting cool, Any cool projects you got on? Um, well, you know what? I'm working with a few friends, but we're going to work on some, like, uh, kind of superhero type uh, uh, individuals. You, you do central casting or just? I, I've been doing uh, casting networks, dude, but no luck. Like, I, I haven't really been putting myself out there as strongly as I should. Cool, so you, but I heard casting networks. Getting in the back of, of your friend's project. That's what I'm yeah. doing, dude. And, I, and I'm kind of relying on my homies, uh, CYA Entertainment and Love Machine. Really cool guys, man. A really cool group of people. Herds Media, um, South Bay Talent Group. Um, they've kind of hired me, bro. I've, I've, I've tagged along. The thing with me is uh, I can't be everywhere at once, you know? Mm -hmm. Right now I'm tattooing in the military. Yeah. And they, they've got me booked out for a few days. So I, I'm, I'm out there working, getting my money, working my clientele with them, tattooing soldiers. Uh, so shout out to American Tattoo Society in Fayetteville. Um, really good people. ATS. Um, Is that Georgia? Uh, that's in uh, North Carolina. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Fay Fayetteville, yeah. North Carolina. But they're all over, though. Oh, okay. They're honestly all over. They've got about nine shops in nine different mil military bases. 
and so they're just growing. I I I never really thought that the 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 military would actually have involvement with tattoo artists, but it makes sense. Yeah, I guess, right. Right. They're gonna get the tattoos anyway. They might as well make some money off. Oh, I know, man. They're making that money, and um, you know what? They gave me a pardon on my record since I have a record. Oh, congratulations! So I had to really meet. Oh, yeah, man. thank you guys, man. They, <laughs> I, I'm so proud of that moment, man. Like, yeah, it was like uh, you know. Are you looking for this button? Yep, there it is. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm off the tattooing soldiers, man, special forces and all these like, nice. like different people, you know. So men you, and you women. know all of the tattoos of like like the Green Berets and all those. Yeah, I'm the getting to see them all. Ones. Yeah, man. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. It's cool. It's cool. I've always, since I was a kid, bro, I, I always wanted to be a soldier. Mm-hmm. Like I, wa- I grew up watching all the like Commando with Arnold, Schor- Arnold Schwarzenegger, Del- Delta Force, Chuck Norris, like American Ninja, like, like. Bloodsport, all these like cool movies when I was growing up. Oh yeah, all these violent movies that I probably shouldn't have been shouldn't have been watching, but I did. Yeah, I hear you, man. <laughs> Wrestling, you know what I mean? Sergeant Slaughter, like all the cool stuff, you know. And especially like, uh, you know, we grew up in this country, and you hear about all the the stuff that goes on. Oh yeah, we the world. idolize guns in this country. Yeah, most we do, countries man. can't even have guns. And yeah, we, I know, right? They're in like every show here. Yeah, seriously, like we just love guns, you know. Yeah, and I feel like you're, you know, you really. Give people joy by putting something on their body, like for life. Oh, dude! You sign your name on their body for life. Yeah, dude. I, I I try to give my best to each tattoo, you know. And it's like the people, the reaction that I get from the from people, from my clients, is, is that's just like then go out there wonderful. and feel like a badass. Yeah, dude. Then go out there and you know you got that badge of honor, you know. I have. Uh-uh, one. You can't tell me nothing. <laughs> that's right. I have just one question: Have you ever gotten a, a tattoo idea from somebody? Or whatever you looked and you went, are you sure you want to put this on your body for the rest so of the So many times, man. And then, you know what? For the sake of things, dude, for just, I don't know, to play, not devil's advocate, but just to like, hey, man, let it ride, you know? Like, just let it ride. You want that? You really want that? Yeah. Unless it's extremely just something that I just won't take part in where I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to do it. Yeah, it's- something real short term, like. You know, F your ex girlfriend. Oh, no, like no, that. no, no. Yeah, I know. You know, if it comes from a place of like anger, something that they're going to re- truly regret, I won't, I won't do it. You'll just tell them I won't do it. Yeah, I won't have no part in it. Like, I'm cool, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I got a homie, though. I know a homie will do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Well, we, that we're out of time. But I want to thank our sponsor, Gift Apply. I want to thank Crow for coming in. You're always an awesome guest. Uh, thank you, Brandon. Appreciate always. it. Always. <laughs> And um, oh wow, he had you set up for that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, uh, and um, and what else? Uh, we're gonna be we're gonna continue being every day in March. So subscribe to the Brandon K Show. We'll have Crow back on sometime soon. Oh yeah, I'll be here, man. Gladly, you know, I'll come up with a good topic for you. And and we're having a lot of fun here on the Brandon K Show. So stick around, and we'll see you next time. All right, guys, take care. <laughs>